two, three. Hello, everybody. This is another episode of Max One on One. After a while, I'm here with you know when, what a, what a great and talented uh, musician. You know, he's a singer, a songwriter. He has collaborated with many projects, also TV. Uh, Robert Fleischmann. So, how did you decide to be a musician? Was that at a very early age? My parents had the stereo the record player in the living room, so I couldn't always listen to music when I wanted to, so I uh, recorded the, uh, I recorded albums onto my tape recorder, and then I could take them in my bedroom, Very and cool. I listen to, listen to them, and then I would sing along with the tapes, and then eventually I uh, figured that I would, uh, when nobody was around, I would turn on the, uh, the stereo in the living room and like, you know, really crank it up. And then I would, I would uh, sing along with uh, Beatle records or Rolling Stone records or, or oh, wow. the Kings or The Who. And then I would turn on my tape recorder and, I would, and then I would listen back to see if I, could bl if I was blending into the, into the track. Wow. But uh, um, are you more uh, a Rolling Stones or Beatles or is equal for you? It's, it's not, uh, you yeah. know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm both. I, I, I love the Beatles because they were very, um, it was cerebral and very melodic. Yeah. And the Stones were very body music, you know, very rhythm and blues. Yes. You know, it's something that you move your body to, you know. Yeah, 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 cool. But, and, and yet, you know, um, Mick Jagger and, uh, and Keith Richards and John Lennon and Paul McCartney, those guys were, that's who I, that's who I, I and that's who I emulated and that's how I learned how to write songs. Okay, 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 perfect. That's a great inspiration. <laughs> the 14th, until you started to work uh, with Journey, what, what, do you have a band before, in that, in, in that window? Yeah, what was the name of it? Um, I was in a band called Wolfgang. Okay. And then I was in a band called Shatter Me. Yes, yes, and and that's. And, um, and that band had a lot of. Um, do you know who Bob James is? No. Sammy uh, Hager. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Now I. So, um, the band that he was in was Shatter Me, and then after, and then when he left, I took his place. Oh, nice. And was in Shatter Me for a while, but I that was short lived. But then I got into just getting into tape recorders and writing songs. Very and cool. So I, um, one time I had a meeting with Chrysalis Records, okay. a publishing company, mm -hmm. in the in the late seven in the seventies, and um, I was there with the publisher, and he was listening to my songs, and all of a sudden I turn around because he he looked at the door, and I turned around to see who he was looking at. And it was George Martin. Wow. The producer. Of the yeah, the Beatles. Yeah, very awesome. So, so he was standing there and he listened to two of my songs. Wow. And he, he just, he, he, he said, um, great job, lad. Wow. And gave, me the thumb, and gave me the thumbs up. Wow. So that day I knew that I wanted to be a professional songwriter. Oh, oh my God. That, that's like a blessing, man. That, that he blessed your career, man. It, it was a blessing in, in a sense. To me. Oh, my God. Then I, I met him two times later afterwards, and okay. uh, he remembered. And um, so that was um, that was a big pinnacle. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's, that's quite a story. Yeah. It's a unique moment. Not every musician can have that opportunity. Could have, right? Because he passed away. Right. But uh, amazing, Robert. That, Let's that's talk right. a little bit about Journey. You wrote three songs with them, and it seems, so to me, everything seems to be on, on the right track when you join the band, right? And then uh, like you, you, you play a couple of shows, and uh, you were writing songs, you know, like you weren't preparing the, the record. Uh, what, what's the name of a record you were there? <laughs> that one that has any time, Wheel in the Sky, and... Um, I think I did like 48 shows with them, I think, or 38 shows. Wow, that's a lot. And then, um, and then uh, we were going to go, we, we uh, actually went in the studio and recorded the demos for some of the songs. Uh, we did Wheel in the Sky, mm -hmm. Daytime, yes. uh, Winds of March. 
Yes. And some other ones. Yeah. That, that, that didn't make it. Yeah, there are, there are some demos on YouTube actually that we can listen. You know, that that's that's right. that's awesome. Right. And um, but those were just like, you know, they weren't really. I didn't really. They weren't worked on. They weren't like honed in and perfected. They were just kind of like scratches. You know. Mm -hmm. tracks. Yeah. They didn't even know. I picked. I picked uh, uh, Roy Thomas Baker for the band. Okay. They didn't. They didn't even know who Roy Thomas Baker was. Okay. And uh, they used to go. They would ask me, "What'd you do last night?" And I go, "Well, I went down to go see the Dead Kennedys and uh, you know, and, and all these punk bands that were happening in San Francisco at the time. The big punk mm -hmm. movement was happening at that time, mm -hmm. and they were totally unaware of that. They were just." You know, mm -hmm. before I joined the band, they were a rock, fusion, jazz. Yes, 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 like... You know, 15-minute songs. So when I came into the band, it was like I kind of rearranged the furniture, and it was a, it was kind of very hard to do because, you know, those those guys are great, great musicians. I mm -hmm. mean, each one of them are just... Yes. Terrific, virtuoso-type uh, musicians. You know, and and they had such great history, and they already had so many albums out prior to mm -hmm. meeting me. Um, it was kind of difficult for me to tell them to do anything, but I had to because um, it would it wouldn't get the result that we got. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So I I kind of like was like the architect for that sound. Yeah, it seems to me, Robert, that um, you know you were always like avant garde. You, you were always, you know, on, the, on whatever was next in the in the art, in the music, you know, and uh, and that's what you brought to the band, you know. So you brought like the new, fresh air to what's going to happen, what's what's going to happen later, you know. It's just a shame that I that I didn't continue on with the band, and the reason mm -hmm. I didn't continue on with the band is because there was an A and R guy mm -hmm. who was. Uh, uh, who was uh, very close with uh, Steve Perry? Oh, okay. Being our guy from from CBS, which the band was on. Yep. So when I actually met, um, when I first came into the band, mm -hmm. I met with all the people, all the executives. And yes. CBS, and they told me that they were going to let go of the band unless they got a lead singer and somebody who could write songs. Wow. So I, so I got hired to do it. Yes. So I did. So then later on, this one per, this one a &R guy that I was saying, he uh, was paying for all of uh, Steve Perry's demos and everything. So he wanted, he, he wanted him, he wanted Perry in, in Journey. So he, the a &R guy, called up Herbie, Herbert, the manager, journey mm -hmm. and said look if, if you take steve i'll give you a larger budget i'll give you mm. i'll give you a producer i'll give you more money for a tour so it was sort of like i'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse yeah I, it, that's why it, it sounds to me because there were no reason to let you go you know and also um Everything, like I say, uh, looked looked to me like was on tracks. So do do you feel like mistreated or blacklisted during the gigs or during you know the recordings? Because I had that feeling that they they kind of trying to push you out of a band, like but it, and it was in a in a very good you know with good manners you know like yeah it was uh, it was a bit weird, but uh, I think the band if I stayed with the band I think the band would have just been just as big yes. But it would have just been a little bit more edgier. Okay. And then when you know when Steve, when Perry came in, then that's when you know all the twelve-year-old girls and <laughs> came in. Yeah. Yeah. But I I am very grateful to them because they championed my songs mm -hmm. and they still uh, play on the radio to this day. Nice. And um, and I'm I'm happy for that. And um, they included me with the uh, the Hollywood Walk Walk of Fame. That's amazing. That's amazing. Also, 
but the, the thing that kills me is that I think that everyone that was involved in the band should have been involved in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay. And they only, you know, took certain people. But, gotcha. Um, well, but it is what it is, you know. good for the whole band in itself, you know. Yeah. Like uh, Eva Jerry and, yep. and all that, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, Bobby Rock, he wrote an amazing book. Not only, you know, this is about the Vinnie Vincent invasion years, but this is not only about that, uh, if you are a Vinnie Vincent or, or Kiss fan. It's not only about that, but it's also about those years, you know, how people live, how the rock and roll, you know, was a, a movement, you know, in, that, in those years. And, you know, and I think it's an amazing book. And... Uh, I probably I don't have many questions about that because I recommend everybody to go out and read the book. But there's a part that is missing. That is how did you you know meet uh, Vinnie Vincent and uh, probably Dana Strum, and how did you guys decided to to put a band together? You know, Vinnie Vincent Invasion. Um. No, well, anyway. <laughs> you can you don't know have to rush. Bobby Rock's uh, book. Yeah. He is a great. He's a great writer. Yep. Very, um, he wrote songs with um, with Paul Stanley, Adam something. Anyway, I think I know. He, yeah, he was a friend of a friend of mine, and he asked my friend if he knew any singers. So my friend said, "Call Robert." And so um, Adam had my number. And Vinny asked Adam if he knew any singers. So he gave Vinny my number. Mm -hmm. And then Vinny called me up. And um, he wanted to, we talked for a bit, and uh, he wanted to come over to my house and play me some stuff, this project. So, um, you know, uh, Vinny knocks at the door, and I open up the door, and Vinny's there, and he's, you know, got jeans on and some sneakers and a t-shirt on and he's got uh, two cassettes in his hand and he walks in wow. and, um, so uh, comes in uh, and sits down in my living room and I you know I made some tea or whatever and uh, we uh, uh, put the cassettes in and I listened to uh, like three or four songs nice and, um, and I was really impressed and I and and the reason I did it is because I, I, I loved his, uh, his, his songwriting and he was just an incredible guitar player. So I just kind of thought, well, I'll just put my, you know, what I do to this on the side, you know, because mm -hmm. this guy is really amazing. So, um, we... Here, I'm just showing the record. I have the record here, the vinyl record that you signed, you and Vinny signed for me. I was showing it on, on the camera. So um, he played me the songs, and um, I, I said, yeah, I'd love to, you know, work on the stuff. And so we, we went in the studio, we recorded, um, I guess we did uh, about five songs. And um, we went in with Andy Johns, who uh, in, was an engineer for uh, the Rolling Stones. Wow. And um, we worked with him for a couple of days. And so then, um, in the beginning of this whole thing, after we recorded, Vinny said, man, I, you know, you and I are going to do this, and da 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 da, -da and, and we're a team, and all this stuff. And, and I go, okay, you know, as long as it's 50-50, I'm, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And um, so then uh, he played the stuff for uh, a couple of record companies, mm -hmm. and he played it for Chrysalis Records, mm -hmm. and they fell in love with it. Yep. And um, and then I didn't hear from Vinny, and what he did was he uh, he signed a deal with Chrysalis. Oh. Oh. So he, it's basically like this: Vinny and I built a house together, and he sold the house, and he took all the money. <laughs> That's what Vinny did, basically, in a very simple manner. So that automatically you were out, <laughs> like you say, I'm not. And I just go, look, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't want to, you know, who wants to work with a crook, you know? Gotcha. gotcha. So um, 
then um, the record company was just kind of pissed because I wasn't involved. Mm -hmm. And so they said, you get Robert back into the scene. So um, they, um, you know, I said, well, I'll do it for this amount of money and I'll do it for this and this and this, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think it's only fair and I'll do the record. So, um, so I did the record. Cool. And then, um, and then towards the, at the end of the record, and we were doing uh, the photo shoot for the mm -hmm. album cover, mm -hmm. and which was horrible. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I um, I, I had my hair was like at one, <laughs> like down to my sh down to my shoulders, you know, and uh, the, the stylist goes, "Oh, let's cut his hair." So some fucking guy cuts my fucking hair to look like a fucking poodle, and I'm just like pissed. Uh, and um, and so that's why you have that face that you're so serious in that. Yeah, <laughs> you're serious in that. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, so anyway, I, I look like I'm with like three inflatable drag queens, and so um, the um. Uh, their manager, Vinny's manager, mm -hmm. came to me with like a like a five inch contract, mm -hmm. like a phone book, and says, "Oh my God, here, just sign it." And I'm going, "I'm not signing anything. I'll take it to my lawyer." No, you have to sign it now. I go, "No, I'm not going to sign it now. You have to sign it now." And I said, "No, I'm not signing it now." And so um, he got in trouble because he told the Chrysalis, the record company, that I was already signed to him. Mm -hmm. And they found out that he was lying, that I wasn't signed to him. And so they fired him, mm -hmm. got rid of him, and then and then everything just fell apart. Gotcha. And, and gotcha. Then, um, then, then they, they asked me if I would go on tour with them, and I said no. Mm -hmm. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to have anything to do with anybody. Mm -hmm. I started getting these weird letters and weird things. Mm. Uh, oh, really? And thinking that I was, I didn't know they were coming from him, saying that I would never work in um, in the in music business again, and, and all this all this weird stuff. Oh man! And, uh, and yeah, and, and it's really funny because he was telling me that he was producing some band downtown in downtown um, L.A. <laughs> and all the and all the uh, the letters that came to me these. These weird letters were all from downtown Los Angeles. Oh. I knew they were from him. Well, for a long time, I just, you know, the guy was just, I, I mean, he was just a dumpster to me. I didn't like him. And then about maybe about four years ago, I went to see uh, Vince Neal with some friends, and, mm -hmm. uh, and Dana was playing with Vince Neal. Yes. And um, so Dana found out I was there. And he, um, he 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 asked for me to come see him, and and I did. I came. I, first I said no, and I said no about three times, and then I said okay, and I and I met with him, and he changed a lot, you know. And so I, I'm, I'm in good terms with him now, you know. You know. <laughs> nice. One very quick technical question, because in in Bobby's uh, Bobby's rock book, he said that uh, you know that uh, Vinny Vincent, he was. So, you know, his ear was so trained, you know, he was so perfectionist that he has this, you know, like this tempo machine that uh, I, that's like, you know, the, um, yeah. for the drum, the drum machine, sorry, thank you for the correction. And uh, and Vinny heard one miss, that, that uh, Bobby Rock missed one hit, so it was all perfect, but he missed one. I said, wait, 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 rewind. That's what he says in his book. Yeah, this is not perfect, and he had to record it again. So, how was? I was there. I was there when all that was going on. Okay, so how was it? Because I can imagine the tension of trying to get the most perfect. It was. It was, it was just. Uh, it yeah. was um, unnecessary. Okay. 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 That's a good, friendly term to define it. Well, thank, thank you. No, thank you for for sharing that because that's something that you know got st stuck in my mind. Because that's bad for Bobby. I mean, yeah. Vinny and I uh, auditioned drummers. Yes. And we we sat there and we listened to about a, a lot of different drummers. And when Bobby came in, Bobby set up his drums, and he was just kind of setting them up and hitting them and kind of playing a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I could tell right there 
that he was the guy. I go to Vinny, this is the guy. And he goes, oh, well, let's listen to him a little bit more. I go, no, this is the guy. Wow. You don't understand. This is the guy. Wow. I love Bobby Rock. I love him, man. I love him, too. And uh, he's a great person. Yeah. And, uh, I've always uh, felt very close with him and have kept in good contact with him for <laughs> years. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So he's a, he's, a, he's a fantastic person, human being. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, um, you know, he... he he drove into the parking lot, uh, like just running out of gas. He had hardly any gas and just rolled in. <laughs> I think we gave him money for Oh gas. my God, poor Bobby, man. He was a kid, like 18, 18, 19 years old, right? Like very young kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he's doing great. He's with Lita now. Yes, yes. yes. Happy guy. Yeah, I'm happy for him, man. This is amazing, and thank you for sharing all these stories. I love this. is gold to me, Robert. This is gold to me. Let me bring you back to 2018. That's the first time I met you, you know, in that expo that it was so, you know. Oh, um, yeah, that was so famous, you know, because you, like, kind of joined uh, Vinny. I don't know if you, you saw him, you know, in, the, in all those, during those years, you know, but that was amazing. That was a, a, a gem on, on rock and roll, you know, because spontaneously you you know walked to the stage and you started to sing with Vinny when he was playing an acoustic you know with his acoustic guitar for like I don't know two or three hundred guys that we were there that night and you know I remember that that was you know like magical you know and I know that Vinny loves you as a singer and he I, I, I mean I think you're his favorite singer and that's my opinion uh, and what have you uh, what 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 do you feel that night when you, you know, reconnected? I, I think it was magical, man. Well, um, I hadn't seen him in like 20-something years, right? Wow. Yeah, no, that nobody saw him. And, uh, and um, it, was, uh, it was like seeing a dead person. Oh, man, you're kidding me. You know, it was like alive, you know? It was yeah, yeah, yeah. So bizarre. It was like... It, it, it was just it was weird it was weird it was just um, it was very emotional yes um, I, I, I had seen him and I talked to him and um, then I was um, there on the side uh, of the auditorium mm -hmm. and uh, I, he was up there you know telling his stories mm -hmm. which I thought his stories were very sad. I thought it was just really a dark cloud, mm -hmm. uh, personally. Yeah. And um, it was just gloomy. And it, it was just up there, just, you know, the, just the river of sorrow. Yeah. Let me tell you... Down. Yeah, let me... So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to him. And then he starts playing. And then he starts into... Um, Uh, back on the streets? Yes, on tears, right? Yeah. And so I back on the streets. Yeah. Back on the streets, and I thought, oh, well, I'll go up closer to see, you know, to, to see him. Yeah. I Because I, I was, like, in the back of the auditorium in a way. Yeah. You know, and so I walked up to the side of the stage, and then all his people were there. Yep. And they're going, you got to go up there. you got to go up there. Nice. No, no. <laughs> this, is his, you know, this is his moment. It's, Yeah. This is his day, you know? Yeah. You know, you got to go up there. And so they grabbed me and literally, like, lifted me up onto the... <laughs> up there. And I walked up there and I put my hand on his shoulder and he turned around and he was just... Uh, happy to see you. Know? Yeah. I think he was so happy to, that, to see you and he was happy that you joined him on stage. There was a, a unique moment, you know, that, that, you know, when you say... Wow, I, I'm so happy that I was there at that moment, you know, to see that uh, reunion between two, the, the, the two of you. Yes, yeah. Well, and I'm not, and, but when I went up there, you know, it was like, boom. Was yeah, changed. the energy changed. The energy, he was happy, yeah. Yes, I think, I agree. I agree, there was a good moment, a good energy. It was an up moment. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> I didn't see it getting up. <laughs> Yeah. I just saw it going down, you know. 
Yeah, but to me, you know, like uh, his uh, flexibility and, you know, availability to sign all the memorabilia that uh, we brought. I, I know we paid for it, you know, but he signed our actually extra stuff. And, you know, it, it was worth to see you both singing and playing guitar, you know. I, I mean, I, I, I sat next to him and I was like, it was like, uh, you know, sitting next to a ghost, like your dead brother. You know? Oh, man. Actually, he's not dead, he's alive. He's there right next to you. Yeah. And I, it, it, I got choked up. I I, not, I did. I got choked up. So did he. You know. Oh my God. We got backstage, we're both crying. Oh man. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that that happened. You know, because it's like probably you could close the cycle. You know, like uh, I, I like when when this. Uh, this... I just wish that he, in the very beginning, hadn't done what he did. Yeah. He would have been such a great run of music. Yes. Uh, oh, definitely. Again, you know, again, something that promised a lot, you know, that uh, yeah. it could, yeah, yeah. Potential. exactly, that's the word, potential, that's the word, anyways, but tell me, you know, a little bit about, you know, nowadays, because I, I follow you, you know, on Facebook, and I see your pictures or your videos, you have like a, a, a whole, in a building, it seems like you have a whole floor of a building, and you have, you know, your art, your piano, you know, and you write songs or, hey, I, I'm writing this song and you share it a little bit with the fans. Tell me a little bit about that life. For the, uh, I have like a, a industrial space. Uh, I have like uh, about 2,400 square foot industrial space and that's where I paint. And uh, I, 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 I paint now mm -hmm. uh, pretty, uh, Consistently, yep. And I, I, and I have art shows, and I, I sell my art, and uh, I just, I, I always have painted ever since I was 13 years old. I painted mm -hmm. and did music. So I've all, either always did music or I painted. And when I got kind of bored of, you know, writing music or I just didn't feel like writing music, I would mm -hmm. paint. And then I would, you know, I and then I do my music. Yeah. You know, so I, I went back and forth all my life that way. Yeah. And so um, you know, I'm much older now in these days, and so I just kind of, this is uh, the way I wanted to, to go out, just, you know, paint and, um, and you know, occasionally write. And uh, I have about, about um, I got about 20 songs that I've written that I really think are, are good songs, and that eventually I will record. Nice. And Good. put out. Nice. But I'm not promising anything really soon. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I'm kind of thinking on that uh, about doing that. But mm -hmm. I really would love to do it with a um, with a record company. Gotcha. Uh, I'm try. I, I don't want to spend my own money on it. <laughs> gotcha. I'm, I'm tired of financing my own stuff. So I see. I have I have quite a few solo albums. You know, I got uh, perfect. I got uh, the Perfect Stranger album and mm -hmm. I have the channel. Mm -hmm. and have um, the Two Sky album. Yeah. I have, uh, you know, um, about three or four um, solo ones where I just play everything mm -hmm. on an, uh, a Dreaming in Tongue, mm -hmm. I have, uh, electronic music, nice. uh, ambient and, and trans music. Um, I, I, I've done ambient music ever since uh, 1974 or five. Oh, very cool. So, I didn't know that. Ambient music, you know, way back then. Very cool. Also, you, you collaborated with Gene Simmons, right? Because uh, a year or two ago, he called you, and uh, some way he explained that you are part of a Kiss family, right? I remember you telling me that story. And I know you presented the vault, because it, he was presenting this huge box, you know, with a bunch of CDs. Uh, I have a song on there. Um, a piece of the rock. That, that's it. Uh, piece of the rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, so uh, we we did a demo of that, and um, he called me up and said he wanted to put it on his vault thing, and I'm going like, oh, I don't even remember the song. <laughs> and so when we went to the the Atlanta, you know, to, to the Vinny thing, yep. um, they had a, a booth with the uh, vault there, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, I went up to the guy, I said, hey, can you, you know, play me that song, because I don't even <laughs> <laughs> the first time I heard it since the, the, you know, we, Amazing, so, amazing. Yeah, you, you work quite well. But I, he and I go back oh, quite a ways. 
Yeah, and it's always been terrific with me. Yeah, yeah, he gave you a, a jacket, right, with a money bag sign, and he signed it for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That that's amazing, Robert. Robert, tell me, you know, uh, across your career, what what's when I was recording at uh, when I was recording the Perfect Stranger album, mm -hmm. I um, I recorded at the uh, record plant in New York. Mm -hmm. And at the record plant in New York, they have a basement. And in the basement um, was um, a uh, an area with a chain link fence around it, about uh, maybe like eight by ten mm -hmm. square foot space, and it was filled with John Lennon um, uh, uh, equipment, his amps, wow. Mellotron. And um, his Chamberlain and Mel Mellotron, I think it was Mellotron. Mm -hmm. But um, so I got to, so somebody let me go in there, and uh, they hooked up the Mellotron onto one of the amps, and uh, I got to play the Mellotron. And on the Mellotron was the the flutes for uh, Strawberry Field. Wow! And wow. Then, um, there was um, the, uh, the 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 uh, the part of Bungalow Bill where the guitar goes ding. Yes. You know that that's on there. Um, uh, on the white album. Uh, the strings strings for uh, that were played on um, um, what uh, whatever what, I, I can't remember. Um, you know my name. There was a mm -hmm. side of a of a kind of like a comedy kind of song that they did, yeah. and there's yeah. the mambo. Yes, yes. And so I, you know, I, that's on the on the CD. I'm sorry, that's on the CD anthology. I, I, I'm pretty sure that those songs. You know my name. Here's my number. And, and then Paul McCartney star planes are around. With all you. that, all that was on there. Wow. And they're playing. And so oh. that I really, I, that was a really. Wow. What a moment. What that that and George Martin blessing your career. What else you can ask? You know, as a as a musician, that's I mean. <laughs> Amazing, Robert. I want to thank you so much for your time. You're very kind. Always, always. Every time I see you, you're so kind to me. You know, I know you, you take your time to, to spend a few minutes talking about music or your art, you know, your your paintings. You know, that that's amazing. I, I really appreciate you. You know, I really appreciate you. So, yeah, tell your friends to uh, go to my Instagram. Yes. Uh, it's Robert Flashman um, Art dot Music. Okay. And that you can check out all my art that I do there. Thank, thank you so much, Robert, again. Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. And, uh, all the best to you, okay? To you too. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you and your family.